Hey there, it's David. We're going to take the next four episodes and review some practical things that you can apply in your life starting right now. All with the goal of helping you to be real with yourself, with God, and with others. This will be a review of what we've already discussed on past episodes, with the added bonus of steps to take and perspectives to be transformed. All with the goal of being real with yourself, with God, and with others. Before we begin, I want to remind you that none of this is easy. For if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's hard to be real. So don't beat yourself up if this island is challenging you. Don't forget that you don't have to eat this elephant in one bite. Tackle this island in steps, one bite at a time. Maybe first work on being real with yourself. Then, second, work on being real with God. And then finally, third, work on being real with others. Never forget that there isn't a time frame for any of these items. This is your journey to be, not your journey to be done. You do you, proudly and boldly. The other islands will be waiting for you when you're finally real with yourself, with God, and with others. So, here we go. Let's go island hopping. A hypocrite, according to Dictionary.com, is a person who pretends to have virtues, moral or religious beliefs, principles, etc., that they do not actually possess, especially a person whose actions belie stated beliefs. Don't be that guy or girl. Nobody likes a hypocrite, not even a hypocrite. For a hypocrite is pretending to be someone that they aren't because they don't like who they really are or worse yet, because they don't really know who they really are. Either way, As a follower of Jesus, you're called to avoid hypocrisy at all cost. For as Brennan Manning once said, what an unbelieving world finds simply unbelievable are Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and then walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyles. That's what an unbelieving world finds simply unbelievable. Wait, I guess I need to pause right here for anyone who is tuning into Island Hopping for the very first time. You find yourself listening to a discussion during the fifth season of Island Hopping. Thus, I'm talking to you as if you've already made the decision to commit your life to the care and control of Jesus, which is the step I invited you to take last season. So, if you haven't committed your life to the care and control of Jesus, I invite you to go back to Season 1, Episode 1, The Rules. Start your very own journey to be from the beginning. Don't be a hypocrite and continue to listen pretending to be a follower of Jesus when you're not. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Your goal on this island is to banish hypocrisy from your life, to be real with yourself, with God, and with others. Which sounds simple, but it just ain't easy. Let's face it. How many times in the past week have you been a hypocrite? How many times in the past week have you presented yourself as someone that you're not? I'm not talking about avoiding political conversations when you find yourself in a situation where your opinion is obviously in the minority. And I'm not talking about telling someone that their outfit looks good when it doesn't. I'm talking about you presenting yourself as someone that you aren't in order to save face, in order to boost your popularity, or in order to fit in with the crowd. Now, don't misunderstand. You can be a hypocrite in the best of ways, but even a hypocrite in the best of ways is still a hypocrite. You can be a hypocrite by pretending to follow Jesus when you really don't. You can play church on Sunday and then go out and be a complete jerk Monday through Saturday. The playing church part is your hypocrisy. For if you really did follow Jesus, you wouldn't be a jerk Monday through Saturday. Again, this island is about being real with yourself, with God, and with others. 
This island is the first leg of a lifelong journey of being a follower of Jesus. Deciding to follow Jesus saves your soul. Being a follower of Jesus transforms your life. And there's a big difference between the two. Note to self, you don't just want to have a saved soul. You also want to experience a transformed life. Thus, your goal is to be real. For the opposite of being a hypocrite is being real. Yet, sadly, we're all very used to hypocrisy. We've been desensitized by our fractured, faulty, sin-stained world. But never forget, as a follower of Jesus, you're called to live in the world, not of the world. How do any of us live of the world? One way is that we accept hypocrisy in our lives and we even reward hypocrisy every single day. Worse yet, we not only recognize and accept hypocrisy in someone else's life, we recognize and accept hypocrisy in our own lives. After all, at some point in all of our lives, everyone will be a hypocrite in some way, shape, or form. What do I mean about accepting hypocrisy in our lives? Let me give you three examples. Everyone knows a politician will say anything in order to be elected. A politician will present themselves as someone that they aren't in order to get votes. But we simply accept this fact as normal and even acceptable for the situation. We say, oh, that's politics. When in truth, this is really culturally acceptable hypocrisy. Everyone knows that a junkie will say anything in order to get a fix. A junkie will present themselves as someone that they aren't in order to score. But we believe with the best of intentions that this time it will be different. We simply accept this fact as normal for the situation and we hope for the best. We say, well, that's addiction. When in truth, this is really culturally acceptable hypocrisy. Everyone knows that social media influencers don't actually live the life that they are influencing others to live online. An influencer will present themselves as someone that they aren't in order to gain followers. But we simply accept this fact as normal and even acceptable for the situation. We say, oh, that's just influencers. When in truth, this is really culturally acceptable hypocrisy. We've all been desensitized to hypocrisy. Not just because it's all around us, but because deep down in those places we don't like to acknowledge. We all want to keep the hypocrisy door open for ourselves. We accept hypocrisy in others so that we can feel better about the hypocrisy in our own lives. Admitting that you're a hypocrite in some way, shape, or form is your first step to actually being real. Your first step in living in the world, but not of the world. When it comes to hypocrisy and being a follower of Jesus, the bar is set high. For now, not only does your hypocrisy cast you in a bad light, your hypocrisy also casts Jesus in a bad light. And let's be real, the world has met way too many followers of Jesus who are hypocrites. People who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and then turn around and deny him by their actions. The cold hard fact is this. Since you've made the decision to commit your life to the care and control of Jesus, everything you do is a direct reflection on Jesus. An unbelieving world is going to watch you and listen to you. Through you and the example of your life, people will decide who Jesus is and what being a follower of Jesus is all about. This is totally unfair. But because you've decided to commit your life to the care and control of Jesus, this is now your reality just being real. Now that you find yourself standing under this new reality, I want to help you learn how to avoid hypocrisy. But first things first, repeat after me. I've been a hypocrite in the past. I've, I've been, been a hypocrite, hypocrite in, the, in past. the past. 
and I will be a hypocrite in the future. And, and I, I will be, be a hypocrite, hypocrite in the future. My goal isn't to never be a hypocrite again. My, My goal is, is to, never, to be never, never be a hypocrite, hypocrite again. 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 My goal is to avoid hypocrisy in my life. My goal, my goal is, is to avoid hypocrisy in my, in, my, in, my in my life. Remember, perfection means being the best you that you can be right here, right now. Perfection doesn't mean getting everything right all the time. In order to accomplish this goal, you need to do three things. First, you need to take the time to examine your life. You need to take a long, hard, honest look at things like the decisions that you make and the friends that you have. You need to ask yourself, what's important to me? Into what activities do you put your time, talents, and treasures? And why are those the activities into which you choose to invest your time, talents, and treasures? You need to be honest about how you view other people. Not only the people you know, but also the people that you don't know, especially the people that don't look like you or act like you. Do you feel that you need to impress others? Do you feel an overwhelming desire to fit in? Do you look at other people and feel that you're better than them, or do you feel that you're less than them? Also, you need to ask yourself, how do I treat myself? Do you dress in a certain way in order to portray a certain message about yourself? Do you cut yourself some slack or are you extremely hard on yourself? Do you spiral when you make a mistake into believing that you're a horrible person? In essence, I'm inviting you to build a case against yourself. Think of it this way. If someone accused you of being a follower of Jesus, would there be enough evidence from your daily life to convict you? At this point, maybe there isn't enough evidence to convict you. Well, remember that today is the first day of the rest of your life, and grace abounds. The second thing that you need to do in order to avoid hypocrisy is surround yourself with people who will encourage you, support you, and who will love you enough to tell you the truth. This might mean, at the very worst, that you'll have to change some relationships in your life. At the very best, you're going to have to have some honest conversations with the others in your life. You don't want to ostracize anyone or give anyone the impression that you don't believe that they're good enough to be your friend. But, you do want to make sure that those that you call friends not only have your back, but that they love you enough to call you out. For hypocrisy hates honesty. And that's exactly what you need from and with the people in your life. Side note, added bonus. This pursuit will open many doors for the others in your life to also be real. To be real with themselves, with God, and with others. For the people who choose to stay in this kind of relationship with you will also be open to you being this kind of friend for them. And how else will anyone in your life ever be exposed to the good news of Jesus if they aren't exposed to you? This will mean that you'll have to examine the why behind your friendships. For maybe you're being a hypocrite in some of your friendships. Ask yourself, am I friends with someone because of what they will do for me socially or professionally? Are they my friends because of the benefits? Or are they my friends because I like them as people? You'll explain to the people in your life about your goal to avoid hypocrisy. Because you want to be a better person and you don't want to give Jesus a black eye. And you will ask them to walk with you and to help you accomplish that goal. In turn, you'll walk with anyone who agrees in order to help them accomplish this very same goal in their own lives. We'll spend more time on this reality in a later season. Finally, and this one is so important, it rests on the three truths about being real. One, there's no longer secular and sacred when it comes to your life. Because you're a follower of Jesus, everything in your life is now sacred. You're a sacred child of God. Two, grace abounds. When Jesus died on the cross, it was finished. 
all the grace that you'll ever need is already yours. And three, today is the first day of the rest of your life. God isn't judging your future by your past, so why are you? Thus, the third thing that you need to do in order to avoid hypocrisy is to stop beating yourself up when you're a hypocrite. For each and every single follower of Jesus is a hypocrite every now and again. All followers of Jesus lose their temper or allow old habits and biases to creep back in. All followers of Jesus struggle with the flesh and the sinful ways. Avoiding hypocrisy isn't about getting everything right all the time. It's about being real when you get it wrong. Fess up to your mess up. Learn and grow and move forward. That's what an unbelieving world is looking for. Not followers of Jesus who are perfect, but followers of Jesus who are real. So what are your three steps to avoiding hypocrisy? One, you need to take the time to examine your life. You need to ask yourself, what's important to me? And to what activities do I put my time, talents, and treasures? And why are those the activities that I choose to invest my time, talents, and treasures? Two, surround yourself with people who will encourage you, support you, and who will love you enough to tell you the truth. This might mean at the very worst that you'll have to change some relationships in your life. At the very best, you're going to have to have some honest conversations with the others in your life. And three, stop beating yourself up when you're a hypocrite. Avoiding hypocrisy isn't about getting everything right all the time. It's about being real when you get it wrong. Fess up to your mess up. Learn and grow and move forward. Hey there, it's Mackenzie. Island Hopping is a production of Journey to Be Ministries and is sponsored by Beneva Christian Church in Sarasota, Florida. You can find Beneva Christian on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and the Beneva Christian app, as well as their website, BenevaChristian.com. If you'd like to contact my dad, just drop him an email at islandhoppingpodcast at gmail.com, or you can text him by clicking on the link in the show notes.